Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this review. Now, uh, before we start, uh, I'm not sure if you start from question one, but if you're watching this, you are starting from question one. Um, so a lot of people, they just focus on what to do. And if you've been watching my videos, uh, or if you are actually in my class, I always emphasize the fact that you have to understand the meanings of words that you see. For example, if you see the word roots, you gotta know what it means, right? So uh, when we say we have two roots, now the first thing I wanna say is if you know the roots, that means you know the factor, okay? They are closely related to each other. They're not the same, but they're closely related to each other. When we say, oh yeah, you have two roots, roots of two and roots of four, it means this. It means that you have a factor of x minus two. It means that you have a factor of y, x minus four, okay? And what we are trying to do is that uh, basically we want to find out all the factors. And since it is x to the fourth power, then we know there should be, uh, well, if we can all break it down to linear factors, then we should have four sets of parentheses. And, uh, and that, if you uh, go to pre-calculus, uh, that would also mean we have uh, four intercepts, uh, four x-intercepts, okay, in particular. But uh, without going too far, so let's just, uh, we'll go ahead and find out the remaining roots. Now, it's kind of important to talk about the x-intercept, actually, because uh, x-intercept, are the ones with the x value and the y value, it's equal to zero. And if you remember the remainder theorem, and that is uh, you put in the, uh, the, uh, the, the possible x values there, if it's a root, then the remainder should be zero. So here's another thing too. If it's a root, then one thing that we can say for sure is a remainder must be zero. So we are going to do synthetic division in just a moment, okay? We are going to do synthetic division in just a moment. And what we would have right here, the remainder, it should be zero. If it is not zero, ooh, then we know there's a problem, okay? We know there's a problem. So we put a two right here and we put the two right in here, not negative two, but two, okay? Because uh, we are finding, we are trying to put in what the number is to make the factor equal to zero. Okay, so, uh, so that's why it's a two. And the first number is to always bring down the two. Two times two is four. And then we add the numbers together. And please make sure that you add numbers properly. I saw a lot of students see that they multiply numbers incorrectly or they add numbers incorrectly. So they had the concepts right, but somehow they just hurt themselves without these little simple math done properly. So you have a uh, negative three times uh, negative three, and then times two, you've got negative six, and negative 17 um, plus negative six would be a negative 23, then times two would be negative 46, and this would be 12, 12 times two is 24, which I'm very happy because it would give us a remainder of zero. And we say, oh, hooray, we, are expect we, we did expect a zero, it is now a zero, that is good. That is good. Now, what we have here, like the numbers right here will be like 2x cubed. Now, I'm going to write it down here. You don't have to write it down, but I'm just going to write it down in light gray. So this is like 2x, uh, 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 23x plus 12. Okay, this is the scenario. And we say, all right, cool, cool, cool. But can we go ahead? Can we go one step further and find out the quadratic equation? Because, uh, because now that we divide it once, we go from uh, quadratic, which is to the fourth power, to, uh, to cubic. So if we can divide it one more time, then we should have a quadratic equation. And if we have a quadratic equation, we probably would be able to factor it easily. So in this case, we'll divide by four. Now, some students, they use the original to divide by four. No, 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 you want to continue because that's how you bring the fourth power expression all the way down to quadratic so that we can factor. So again, we bring down a two, four times two is eight, and then uh, negative three plus eight is five, five times four is 20, 
And then you've got a negative three, negative three, negative three times four, it's negative 12. And hooray, we got a zero. Okay, we've got a zero right here. So that means we have ourselves a quadratic expression right here. And we will go ahead and set it equal to zero because for a root to happen, then uh, the y value should be zero, okay? So here we go, 2x times x gives us the uh, 2x squared. Now, what I'm puzzling right here is where do I put the three and one? I mean, it's gonna be one of these two slots. And the other thing I'm also uh, puzzling right here is whether it is plus six. Uh, I mean, is it, uh, is it plus three, minus one, or minus three, plus one? Now, because it's plus five x, and I'm thinking about, hmm, you know, what can we do when we do the FOIL? What can we do to get positive 5x? I'm going to suggest this. And the reason I'm suggesting this is because when we do the outer, that's 6x. When we do the inner, that is negative x. And therefore, well, 6x minus x, that's 5x. Okay, so, so that's how we know they are equivalent to each other. And that's how we know 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, x, minus, x plus 3 is equal to 0, so x equals to negative 3, and x equals to positive 1 half. So these are the two remaining roots, okay? These are the two, these are the two remaining roots. Now, of course, if they ask you to factor this completely, I can just go ahead and put this uh, back in here. So, uh, so whether you are factoring completely or finding the roots, you basically follow the same procedure. It's pretty straightforward, okay? Nothing too challenging, I would say. But uh, again, the biggest challenge is not the work that you need to do, is how do you reason it so that you know this is the right thing to do? I think that's the most challenging thing, okay?